Hey guys, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program test platform where we're just about to find out if that bottom command pod is cross fuel capable. Yes, yes it is. So with that done, what are we building? Well, you'll remember last episode that we sent Jeb up to Minmus in um, the biome bouncer. Um, now that obviously doesn't have any return functionality. And as it's covered in science, we need some way of sending all the science back home so we can get maximum science for our science dog and that's where this double command plot pod which is going to be covered in lots of um uh parachutes comes in uh this is literally well as i say it's just for carrying nothing but but um science and that that right there is what we're going to land on mimus i think we need to throw some um landing legs on it and maybe a few lights and things like that but the, you now actually have in essence everything that i'm building this episode um so yeah there we go we're just going to jump forward to this uh this is like the lifter i'm using underneath it and in fact i am so impressed with this lifter that we're going to turn it into a sub assembly because after all no one wants to build the same lifter time and time again especially when it's just a standard pattern like this you know big big main thrusting engines down the middle the one point whatever size uh, meter liquid fuels around the outside and then boosters on the outside of that all asparagus together it's simple but it's time consuming but anyway we're going to name this one betty and um stick it on the the middle bit i was tempted to stick it on the three outside bits but it would all be horribly clashy and things would like clip into each other and i could see we'd have massive explosions and and all sorts uh and now we're going to pause for like oh forever as i sit around trying to think of a name for this vessel that is designed just to bring science home uh and in the end i call it alexandria's pride after alexandria or alexander the great um the you know the the creator of the greatest um, library ever made because libraries and science and stuff right anyway after that convoluted thought process that has led us to the name uh, we're going to throw some lights on and uh, various other things and i think we can actually jump straight to the launch pad at this point uh, and in fact here we go now in the intervening time i've got myself a new kerbal kirk kerman yes kirk it's a shame it's not uh, james but there we go um and Kirk is a, a, a valiant Kerbal. He knows what he's doing. Um, he, he's done, gone and done all the, the, the tests and stuff to prove that you could be a Kerbinaut. It's not They're not Kerbinauts. Wait, we've had this discussion before in another series, haven't we? What do you call the, Ker, the Kerbals? Because they're not astronauts, because that's our Greek word for, for space, right? Astro. Um, so, yeah, and their language is something completely different. But anyway, we're not going to get back into that discussion again. We're going to watch this launch. Are we actually going to watch this launch again? Should we, should we watch this get up to at least like 70 kilometers or so? Um, so we, we, we've shed our main booster engines and we're now shedding in order our um, outside liquid fuel engines. Um, I, I hope everyone there knows the, the theory behind asparagusing. You'll notice that um, these yellow fuel lines feed in uh, from the ones that were just let, dropped to the next ones that are going to be dropped to the ones after that and then to the middle one so that the fuel just kind of drains down this great big long line towards the the, the, the biggest engine um, meaning that as time goes on we can throw away these excess fuel tanks as quick as possible <coughs> there should be theoretically some way of using decouplers and, and separatrons so that we're not just throwing away bulk units we could throw away individual fuel tanks but that sounds like a lot of work and I am fundamentally lazy I mean asparagus can get a bit much at times um, hence why I use sub assemblies anyway after that ridiculous ramble about asparagus we find ourselves up at 60 kilometers and with my friends spamming me on my um, sp uh, steam i do quite like having the, the it all um, transferred across to steam as it does make uh, updating nice and easy but oh my friends get in the way now anyway the music has started and we're down to our last singular engine before we get to the actual like this is landing on Minmus stage. Um, so we're going to take a moment to be all aesthetic and stuff and be like, ah, oh, look out the window. Hey, look at my ship. Uh, look at Kerbin over there. Oh, sunsets and stuff. Ah, oh, isn't it all great? And now space is boring again. So I think we're um, possibly going to jump up. Oh, that was just a, a complete one. 180, 360. It's a 360 when you go all the way around the circle. 180 is half. Yes, maths. 
Anyway, here's a quick look at the Maneuver Nude that we're going to be performing to get up to Minmus. Um, and indeed, well, I know I kind of messed up that little bit at the end there, but you know what, that's not really important this time, because what is important is the... Uh, it's not a transfer burn. It is a transfer burn, is it? When you, when you, when you um, bust up your orbit to intersect another one. Yeah, that sounds like a transfer burn to me. Anyway, this one is the important one. Uh, we're going to time warp our way around and get that little green bar down, because... Once again, it's all about green bar downs. Not just green bar downs on their own. Indeed, we need some time accelerations as well to make this just a little bit less mind-numbing because I'm running out of words to fill in all these gaps now. And with the judicious uh, application of time acceleration, we make our way round so that my maneuver nude marker and my prograde marker are in the same space on my nav ball so that we can just bust our, uh, op our orbit back up to the right altitude to make us intersect with Minmus. Now of course just because our um, orbit is out far enough to be with Minmus it doesn't mean that my inclination is correct so that is something that we need to take care of a little bit around the orbit but at the moment we are just making sure that we spend enough delta v to get far enough away from Kerbin to make us up high enough because it's all about getting high enough away from Kerbin. And after acquiring the appropriate amount of highness we've gone round our orbit a little bit and performing this little uh, trim manoeuvre so we can get ourselves in as close to Minmus as possible. Well I'm not really trying to get as close into Minmus as possible, I'm just getting into the, the, the sphere of influence and then I'm doing all the finessing out there because every time that I've sent this mission out so far, I've had bags and bags of fuel to play with, which is good, you know, I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. Anyway, so I set myself an alarm to tell me when I was entering the SOI. Um, that is, this is mainly because it is next to impossible to try and add a manoeuvre node at the periapse of your approach to Minmus when you're all the way out by Kerbin because you're trying to like zoom in across the thing and get a, a close thing in. So what I do here is just set this up. Um, I was a little bit heavy handed on that so I'm going to take uh, what, a second or two longer making sure this orbit is nice and nice and neat in the direction I want it to go in. And then we're going to set another alarm and warp our way down as close as possible. So we can get the tightest circularization burn and basically just have ourselves down nice and close to make our other circularization burn which then brings our uh, eccentric orbit down into a circular orbit um, and yeah so we can have a nice high efficiency landing um, I'm not sure why I'm so obsessed with efficiency at this point in the mission as I still have like my launch stage left and like I'm supposed to be using just my landing stage at this point which I'm just gonna take down f full land uh, full fuel cells down with me which you know it's not a terrible thing uh, if I was playing unmodded Kerbal it would be a waste because I wouldn't be able to get access to them because there's no docking ports or anything but as I have the uh, attachment system on there I can drain them through the liquid fuel they have so with the final few uh, meters per second of Delta V expended to get you know, a nice nice orbit I like it I didn't take it down quite as close because I wanted to do this maneuver now obviously I want to try and get onto uh, an equatorial approach because as you can see there that's where my my base of operations is um, now it take you, you can see here why I normally cut out my maneuver node um, operation because yeah I, I'm a bit slapdash with it but you'll notice here that it takes two days for me to drop down to that particular orbit and um, whilst I could have done it through time acceleration and just drop down there I think hey you know what I'm just gonna throw this round to look, face the right direction because as we all know um, absolute direction is conserved in Kerbal for some strange reason I'm not, I'm not sure how that actually works but you know that's what happens um, so we'll, we'll face this up this way the Kerbal alarm clock will uh, quite happily remember my maneuver node for me and I'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure because what I'm gonna go do now I'm gonna show you next episode bye